Welcome back to the learning circuit. Today we're going to look at the Arduino starter kit and do one of the projects in the project book. In the starter kit, uh, there's a whole bunch of projects and the first project deals with parallel and series circuits, but since we've made those quite a bit on the learning circuit, we're going to jump to project two, the spaceship interface. Let's look at what we need to pull out of our Arduino starter kit to make our project. You're going to want your Arduino, your USB cable to plug it into your computer, you will need the breadboard and jumpers that come in here. Um, these are little colored wires like this, but I'm going to cheat and use some of these. These are a little bit easier for me to use. Uh, I recommend getting some if you don't already have some. You're also going to want your box of components. Now let's look in here and see what we need. On the first page of every project in our Arduino project book, it lists the components that we're going to need. You're going to need a tack switch, two red and one green LEDs, three 220 ohm resistors to go with each LED, and you're going to want one 10 kilo ohm resistor. For this project, you're going to need to program your Arduino with the code that's written in the project book. To do this, we have to plug it in by USB. Thankfully, it comes with this handy cable. So you want the big fat square end to plug into your board, and then we'll plug the other end into our computer. There are a few different ways you can program your Arduino. If you go to the website arduino.cc, you can go to software, uh, and then you can either go to downloads or online tools. You can code directly in your browser, or you can download the software for offline use or just to use it on your desktop. To make sure that your computer is seeing your Arduino board, you're going to want to go in your Arduino software and under tools, you're going to select the correct board, in this case, the Arduino Uno. And you're also going to want to make sure that you're hooked up to the right port. It'll usually say something about a USB or it'll actually say Arduino Uno. So the Arduino spaceship interface is on page 33 of our Arduino project book. For every project in the project book, there's an image of what the circuit looks like hooked up on the breadboard and connected to the Arduino, as well as a circuit diagram. In Arduino, when you open a new code file, it's referred to as a sketch. And each new sketch has two functions on it to start. It'll say void setup with a pair of parentheses and then a set of curly brackets. And then it'll say void loop with, again, the parentheses and the curly brackets. Anything that you put between the curly brackets is the code that will happen when the function is called. Sometimes for your code, you're going to need to create what are called variables. These are items that you want the code to remember so that you can reference them later. So if I created a variable called cat and it set it equal three, anytime I type cat in my code, it'll pull up the number three. One of the reasons you want to create variables is so that if you use that variable throughout your code and later you want to change the value, you can just change the value at the top of your code and not have to go and try to find every single place where you want that value to be changed. For our project, according to the project book, we need to create the integer switch state and have it equal a value of zero. So let's type that in. For every variable, you want to give a type, a name, and a value. The variable we're going to use is an integer, so it starts with int. We're assigning the name to it switch state. We can assign it whatever name we want. In Arduino, it's common practice if it's a two-word name for your variable to make the second word uppercase. Be aware that names are case sensitive, so you want to make sure that you keep it consistent throughout your code, otherwise it'll think you're referring to something else. After you name your variable, it's a good idea to give it a value. Here I gave it equals zero, and then I ended it with a colon, which tells the code that I'm done with this line and it can execute that line of code. The next part of our code is the setup. So we're going to type everything between the curly brackets after void setup. Here in the code, you can see that there's something already written with two forward slashes in front of it. Now, what that is, is a comment. In Arduino, if you want to comment something out, which means that it won't be active in the code, um, you can put two forward slashes in front of it, like this. Uh, what's convenient is in the Arduino app, it turns it gray so you can tell what's a comment and what's actively part of your code. I'm going to type out our setup code really quick. See you in a second. Our setup is where we configure our pins so that our Arduino knows what's an input, what's an output, and which pins we're using. So if you remember, we set our button up to digital pin two and our LEDs up to pins three, four, and five. So our code reflects this. To set up our pins, we type pin mode, which pin it's designated to, and whether it's an input or an output. So our three LEDs are designated as outputs and the button as an input. 
Now, when our code runs, the setup is going to run once at the beginning to initialize, and then the loop will keep running over and over again. The reason it runs over and over again is so that it, it can keep sensing the inputs and outputs. So if we push the button, when it loops, it'll sense it again and tell whether it's been pushed or isn't being pushed. OK, you don't need to see me type, so I just went ahead and typed all of the code that's in the project book into my program here. You got switch state digital read two. So that's gonna look at our button on pin two to see what it's doing. And then we have it followed by an if else statement. So it's gonna look at it and if this state is accurate, then it'll run that code. Otherwise, it'll run the rest of the code. Digital pins are either high or low, a one or a zero, on or off. So if the button is not pressed, it's low, it's a zero. And so this will tell the pin three, the green LED, to be high, which is on. And it will tell pins four and five, the red LEDs, to be off. So within your loop and our switch state function, you can, again, look at your pins and decide whether you want your LED to be on or off. If you want it to be on, you can label it to be high and just make sure that you're designating the right pin that goes to the LED that you want to be turning on. If you want that LED to be off, you can designate it as low. The last little piece of our code is this delay right here where it says delay 250. The delay function functions in milliseconds. So if you want to be one second, it would be 1,000. So here, it's going to delay for a quarter of a second. Let's review our code to see what it's supposed to do, and then we'll run our circuit and see if it works. If the button is low, not pressed, then the green LED will be high, so it'll be on, and the red LEDs will be off. Else, if the button is pressed, meaning it's high, which we don't need to state because the else, there's only one other option other than low, so else automatically equals high uh, in terms of the button being pressed. So if the button is pressed, then the green LED will be off, the first red LED will be off, and the second red LED will be on. Then it will wait a quarter of a second, and the other red LED will be on, the first red LED will be off, and then it'll wait another quarter of a second. So let's see if that's what it does. Um, first, it's not just gonna work because we haven't sent the code over to the Arduino yet. So we're gonna have to go up here and hit this little arrow upload button and see if it sends. Now, if there was something wrong in our code, it would throw an error message. Did it throw an error message? We're good, it says done uploading, hooray. Um, if you want to make sure that it's not going to throw an error message, you can click this check verify button and it'll tell you if there's any problems with your code. So our code should be on our Arduino now. Let's see what happens. Haha, all right. The button is not pressed, so the green LED is on. That is accurate. All right, green LED on when button not pushed, if I push the button. So our circuit did what it was supposed to do. When the button is off, the green LED is on. When we push the button, it turns that off and turns this one on, and then it waits a quarter second, and then it goes to the next part of the code where it turns that LED off and then the next red LED on, and then it waits a quarter of a second, and then it runs the loop again and sees that there is no button press right now, and so only the green LED is on. It worked. So if I want to make changes in my code, I can go ahead and make changes, but this won't change here in the hardware until I upload the code back to the Arduino. The Arduino cannot hold two programs at once. So whatever the most recent program that has been uploaded to it is what will run. Well, that was the Spaceship Interface, Project 2 from the project book in the Arduino Starter Kit. You can find the link for that in the description below. If there are any other projects from the Arduino Starter Kit or any other Arduino projects in general that you'd like to see here on the learning circuit, tell us about it on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash the learning circuit. Happy learning. Oh,